Hello, everyone. Uh, this is Nohal Pains. Uh, I'm so excited to be here with you, and it's a pleasure to be speaking for the first time in Tableau Conference about one of my favorite topics about governance. This is my favorite uh, conference, and I've been here before in uh, 2016 uh, and 2017. And the good thing is every time I come here in, uh, to attend the conference, uh, something unpredictable happened. So I remember back in 2016, um, it was my first time to attend the conference, and I was so excited because it was only two months after I learned the tool. And I would never expect that after three years from that time, I would speak in this conference. Um, and also, the big event that happened that day is the election day, pre presidential election day. And the results were totally unpredictable. We were so excited to, to be there at that uh, time and to attend this event. Back in 2017, I remember in Vegas, uh, I was, uh, it, it happened after uh, the sad incident of the shooting, unfortunately, and I stayed in Mandalay Bay. Uh, I lost my luggage that day, and on top of this, I got a very nasty cold. So it was a very rough start uh, to start with, and, um, but luckily, things got better. I met a friend, ex-classmate, who used to study with me before, I never met her uh, from 10 years, and then uh, she invited me over to her place. She, she used to live in Vegas at that time, and she lent me a pair of pajamas and toothpaste, uh, and uh, things got better. My cold got better, and I was able to uh, enjoy the conference. Um, and the good part is that I got my luggage. So, <laughs> uh, so things happen, uh, and unpredictable events happen in our life. That's the beauty of the journey of our life. Um, I'm a senior data scientist working in Manulife. It's a Canadian company uh, that's headquartered in Toronto. Um, it has other uh, facilities in Asia and US. It operates under Manulife in Canada and in Asia, and operates under uh, John Hancock Investment in US. So uh, my team were happy for me that coming to Vegas, and they told me, we wish to be with you. So. I told them, you know what, I would take you all with me. That's, that's the goal. <laughs> so uh, this is my team. Uh, the coolest person is in the middle, the shortest one. Um, and we were enjoying our time in one of the escape rooms. Escape rooms is very popular in North America, and uh, it's a very great way to get the people together and enhance the um, collaboration and enhance the teamwork spirit. Uh, if you are a manager or a director that manage people and like to, to, have some, to, to make them have some fun and to come together, uh, that's the goal, escape rooms. So the way it works is they, they just uh, divide our team to two. We, we were plenty of people here, so divided into two, and then put us in locked rooms. All the rooms have some sort of clues, and we're trying to solve the clues and uh, employ all our mathematical skills and analytical to get out of the room or escape. It was total fun, and uh, it was full of locks, actually, and, leisure, uh, and the treasure box at the end where we have to open it and find another box and, and get the map and decode this, uh, the, uh, the, the message until we get into uh, the key, and the key was up here, uh, this is the key of the uh, treasure box, and then we find the key of the room, and we, can, we managed to escape the room. It was total fun. Um, so uh, I really strongly recommend the escape rooms for your teams. So speaking about the locks, um, let's talk about governance. So the agenda today is, uh, at the beginning, I will give you an introduction about uh, what is IT governance, and um, then I will walk you through uh, the uh, importance of governance in, in business. Um, then I'll uh, touch down on different models of governance. Next, I'll move to the business use case that we had in my company and how I solved this business use case using Tableau dashboards. I'll talk technically, uh, not everything theory. Uh, the introduction only will be theoretical, but then I will dive into how I, I put the dashboard together, and I'll give you some tricks about uh, how I, I prepare the data and some uh, uh, advices how to, to just prepare the data in, in the right way or 
uh, the trade-off in design options that I took uh, down the road. Uh, then we wrap up uh, this with lesson learned and give you some references. So the idea of governance, the, the highest level of governance is the corporate governance. And the corporate governance is the, uh, the system that operates or govern, that allow uh, the, the stakeholders or the board members to govern the company. A subset of this uh, corporate governance is the IT governance, which basically uh, tackle the, the part of the information technology. So the IT governance is about establishing a framework, best practices to leverage the data or to get best uh, outcome out of it in order to move business forward. There's lots of definitions around uh, IT governance. I don't want to complicate things, but you can uh, simply think about it as constitution. The constitution usually regulates how legal entities deal with each other. Here, it, it regulates how people inside the organization, organization deal with the data. Deal with the data in a way that avoid any negative legal implications and keep them safe. So the types of IT governance is two types mainly, uh, data governance and content governance. So the data governance is about making sure that the data is accurate and quality of the data is good. The impact of deploying a good data governance will generate trust in the data, which is a big thing. The content governance, on the other hand, is about placing the right data on the right hand. And the impact of deploying good content governance is it generates accountability. So in my opinion, the most important part in data governance is actually constitute lots of, of uh, components, um, but one of the most important is data quality. I, as a data scientist, for me, data quality is everything. I can do uh, the best model ever, but it will not be good for the business and not, won't be effective unless the data is good. So I'm very keen to have a good quality data to work with. Think about data governance as a parent that wants uh, he, to get some tomato for supper. And he told his elder kid to bring tomato from a reputable store. Unfortunately, the kid decided to take the shortcut and go to the neighbor and get some tomatoes without neighbor's permission. What will happen to the parent? There's two parts in that. The parent will have a problem legally because the neighbor may have cameras and may record the incident, and then the parent have to pay penalties for this event. The other part is about the quality of the tomatoes. Tomatoes may be rotten, may be infested, and maybe also the neighbor is a scientist who likes to inject tomato with lethal uh, dosage. Uh, yeah, it happens. So the quality of the tomatoes will be vulnerable or will put everyone into risk. So same as data. If, for example, imagine that the CEO asked to get some data, asked his, his employee to get some data, and the employee decided to get the shortcut and hack the clients and get the data in an illegal way or get it from a third-party vendor that have fake data, what will happen? When injected this data into the data source, the, the data warehouse of the company, what will happen? So it will put everyone into risk. And we, as a data scientist, we like to use quality data. We are on the top of the pyramid. Think about the top of the pyramid. And we are on the top because we're dealing with uh, directly uh, reporting to the high executives who take decision based on what we are uh, presenting to them. So if we present fake model, based on fake data with low quality, then what will happen to the executive? He won't be able to take any good decision. So this is very important, the quality of the data. For the content governance, uh, people think that content governance is about restricting access. They take it sometimes personally and think that, why are you not trusting me enough to give me the access? Why are you not opening all the data for us to enjoy and build models and do stuff that we really like to do? So it's not about restricting access, actually. It's more about accountability. And accountability is, should be embraced inside the company. 
It's a double-edged sword because on one side, it's good to have the privilege to see the data that no one in, in the company is seeing or using, but on the other side, it's responsibility because imagine that this data have been leaked. And usually leaks happen unintentionally. It's not malice intention, just people didn't follow the, the good practices. So if this happened, this will be not good. And no one likes to, to have legal troubles. So it's, it's good for us to have limited access in order to, if the data have been leaked, then things will, will be not for everybody. Everybody won't be uh, listed uh, as in the suspicious list. So governors have been there from a while. But nowadays, it's become center of attraction. Businesses, business leaders have nightmares about governance. So why is becoming increasingly important? So the, reason, the first reason, and the most important, is uh, the rollout of the Data Privacy Acts. The GDPR in Europe, the PPEDA in Canada, the CTPA in California, all of those acts have been rolled recently from one year and a half or two years. And uh, the compliance uh, or this imposed uh, in, to the, um, the business to have this sort of compliance to these acts. So the compliance problem is not only if, if, it's, if, the, if the business leaders didn't comply, they not only lose money, but on top of this, they will put their, their uh, uh, reputation at stake. And reputation is everything in business. Warren Buffett famously said, it takes for a company 20 years to build a reputation and five minutes to lose it. So reputation is very important here. Another reason why uh, governance become important is uh, the notion of uh, data as an asset and um, this imposes on business having a single source of truth. Uh, and having a single source of truth is good because it, it uh, maintains consistency in the reporting system. So also there is two rising needs uh, in business world. First, self-service analytics, which means giving uh, the opportunity for people in the organization to ask questions and to have the answer by themselves in the right time. The right time is very important because business uh, time is money. And if, if, uh, I, if someone is a business leader and wants to have the answer for a specific question right away, this will help the business to prosper, right? So time is important. Uh, having a self-service analytics is very uh, good thing to have in an organization, and also uh, the business agility. Having the flexibility and the flexible mind this is very important. So to recap, in order to um, to have uh, this uh, data-driven culture, it's not a, a press of a button. It's not an executive order. We need to work for it, or the business leaders need to have a plan. And this plan would uh, include the compliance, the data privacy compliance, and having a single source of truth, self-service analytics, business agility, all of those pillars to have a data-driven culture. The prerequisite of having a data-driven culture is having a good, effective IT governance plan. So the big question now, is the business ready for the new privacy regulation? I will share with you two polls recently published in emarketer.com that tackle this question. So in a poll, they asked uh, the business leaders whether they are prepared for uh, the California uh, Privacy Act or not. Shockingly, only 8% were prepared. And 34% said they will be prepared by January 2020. More than 55% were not prepared and didn't do any plans to be prepared. That's the shocking results. But it's not all bad. On the other side, the side of the customer relation, when they ask the senior marketing executives about how they, they feel about the relationship with the customer after applying the GDPR, 
or whether it's affected positively or negative. So the good thing, it's affected positively. There's lots of good things. So first of all, it heightened the awareness around the data. And second, it increased the trust. <coughs> so trust is really important. <coughs> Trust. Uh, <coughs> so trust is very important. We said that uh, trust is the most important thing in business. And Warren Buffett said it takes a long time to build confidence and trust in the business. So, uh, so gaining trust is, uh, and, and also engaged. So we have three, three point positive things. Gaining trust, engaged, and also the increased expectation of having personalized recommendation uh, for uh, the, uh, the people to enjoy. Uh, this is very important. So uh, governance is hard. From a business perspective, it's very hard to have a plan and to deploy the plan and monitor the plan, monitor the people doing uh, or executing the plan. But on the other side, it will pay off. All this will pay off because the customer relation will be enhanced. We will gain more trust and the business will, will have engaged customers and the customers will expect more personalized recommendation. And they are willing actually to give their PII data in exchange of this uh, useful recommendation. Let's see now the governance models. Three governance models are uh, used. Uh, first, the centralized. The centralized basically have a, uh, a team uh, that govern all uh, or control all the governance. And this team basically can be the IT and they are in charge of creating the data source or the master data and sharing with other team. So there is no uh, other people than those master people or master team that is capable of aggregating data and sharing it. Uh, the good part about it is that this, this model will guarantee consistency. And the, the bad part is that they can be blockers. Those people can be blockers because uh, when other people need data, they can wait forever to get the data. So in order to get this right, they need effective communication between uh, the master team and the people. And also it, it demands flexibility because some, some uh, master team can work with specific uh, tools and these tools, for example, get outdated and need to be changed. So it's good to have a flexible mindset. The other model is delegated. So this is mostly used in businesses uh, where the master team still control the governance, but delegate some of the <coughs> responsibilities to other stewards or champions who know how to do the data or work with data right. The good thing is that uh, it's more effective than the centralized, get things done quickly and also those stewards or champions are basically uh, nominated from different teams and would, they would know the specifics of every team and, and then uh, things will get better in terms of efficiency. But on the other side, expect some inconsistency and this needs some sort of audit from the central team. The other, uh, the third uh, model is self-governing where people govern themselves by themselves. They are responsible. Each user is responsible to aggregate their data and likely use it as well. So here, the lifespan of the data would be lower because there is no shared data around. Uh, but it's totally effective and very um, uh, efficient model if used correctly. So how do you, to make it right, to make it right, we need to deploy certification process and we need to uh, deploy best practices. Make sure that best practices is applied here. Um, unless, if you didn't do this, expect lots of inconsistency. Also, we need to have this sort of ownership. So to list some handful of people that own the data and we will make sure that the data is aggregated right or make sure that the quality and the, the um, accuracy of the data is right. Som sometimes we use tools to do this for us. 
Tableau Blueprint Planner may help the business leaders to set a plan for the governance. And this is, uh, I find it very useful. Uh, so I downloaded uh, personally Tableau Planner and uh, it's an Excel sheet, a big, huge Excel sheet. And one of the tabs that I was interested to look at is the content governance, which is the basic topic of this presentation. So in content governance, uh, there's a specific, um, sorry. So in content governance, there's uh, types here, content management, security permission, and so on. And all the description, you can find them here. And then uh, there is uh, three types of governance model that I've listed. Um, so what happened is usually people mix and match. They don't use strictly a specific model like let's go centralized or let's go delegated. They don't do this. They always do mix and match. For example, they uh, decided uh, to, to make the content management and the content utilization centralized because that's very important to monitor. The other one decided to be delegated. So this is one of the things that you may look, look to if you're interested in um, getting uh, the governance plan uh, or sharing uh, in feedback about governance. So now let's talk about uh, the business use case that I've uh, faced in my company. So the HR department came to Advanced Analytics team, my team, and asked us to design a, a dashboard for them. So the dashboard is called executive dashboard, and they need that each executive would be able to see the data, the PII data of their direct employees. So here we got the red executive, you can see only his employees, but cannot see the blue employees because he's not managing them. And the yellow, see only the yellow. So each, each colorful executive see only his employees. The second ask is a handful of those executive, executives uh, have a VIP privilege. And this VIP privilege allow them to see everybody, not only their direct employees, but also the information or the PII data of their indirect employees. On top of that, usually the VIP executives um, are hiring managers, they hire pe people, and they are keen to check the salary ranges of different roles across the organization. The averages and the minimum and maximum in order to get the good offer for the new hires. So those people uh, have the, the two privilege, VIP privilege and HR privilege. So now the challenge is how to develop a single dashboard that can use the user credentials, user credentials in the Tableau server in order to deploy levels of governance, content governance. Only one single dashboard. Back in old time, in order to do that, we used to design separate dashboards for every team. But now I think about using only one dashboard to deploy this kind of content governance. So I will show you now how the executive dashboard looks like, and then we'll talk about how I, I uh, put things together. So we got in the upper part the greetings uh, of the executive. So the, when, when the executive, at the moment that he put his credential in Tableau server, he he's faced by a greeting. Uh, so this is communication between Tableau server and uh, Tableau desktop. And then um, he, he will see all the employees that is uh, directly managed, all the information in the middle part uh, will appear. But on the, um, in the lower part, this employee, Alama, cannot see his, uh, the information of the other indirect employees. It's locked. And a user-friendly message appeared in red saying that you're not authorized to see uh, this part because you're not having this privilege, the VIP privilege. And also the salaries you cannot see it. So he, he only can see what he's supposed to see. How I do it? First, I have to establish a kind of communication between Tableau server and Tableau desktop. The way it, it goes, uh, 
So the Tableau ad server admin should create a group called managers, and then uh, you uh, then add Alama as an executive to this group. Next, using filters, using uh, calculated fields to uh, write down filters, and those filters actually I employed user functions. So user functions uh, are recently uh, added to Tableau. I'm not sure about which version. Um, maybe 2018, starting from 2018, but not sure about it. Uh, so, but they are very useful. They are amazing because I can do lots of stuff. They are very powerful. So I use is member is member of which checks whether the uh, the uh, person who logged in is a member of this uh, particular group managers. And we have the user domain, which checks the domain where he's coming from. And we check also at the end the username uh, of this uh, person. So we can segregate the views inside the dashboard according to the credentials of the user who logged in the server. And by this way, you can use this binary filter by locating it, uh, by embedding it inside the viz or the dynamic viz that you want to show or hide. And by this way, it's only shown when uh, this filter is true. For the VIP executive, Eugene is the VIP executive. He, wa he was able to log in and see all his uh, direct employee information. And then he can check also uh, the indirect employees as well. Uh, so this is exclusive for VIP. And now it's the same dashboard that I showed you before. But now things are different because different authorization is given. Uh, so how do I do it? I created uh, another group called VIP executive. Eugene is added to the group, and then binary filters with user functions is member of, checked whether he is VIP executive or not, and place all of those binary filters in the filter shelf of the dynamic view that you want to hide or uh, unhide. The third part is the HR privilege. The HR privilege where Eugene can check the salaries as well. It's now open for him to check it out. And uh, how I do it, the same, I get a group, I created a group in Tableau server called HR, and this group, Eugene is added. So now Eugene is added in two groups, VIP and HR. And in order to aggregate both of them, we use the conjunctive ends so that I can stack the ends uh, and use the is member to check the membership. How I prepare the data and secure my data source. So the data that I presented in the dashboard is not, of course, real data. Otherwise, I will be in trouble. <laughs> it's very funny that I'm talking about privacy and governance and then show the real data. So this data is coming from Kegel. Um, and you can, uh, I, I put the link here. Maybe you would like to download uh, the data and play with it and see how governance or content governance can work. Uh, so the data basically is about the employees, uh, demographics, uh, age, uh, marital status, citizenship, and so on. And um, also it has some information about uh, how they stayed in the company and um, pay rate and stuff like that. The, main, the most important part is that this is a flat file that have both employee name and manager name. So it's a bit tricky for me to put it together. And I don't have any column that state this uh, person or employee report to this manager. So to solve this challenge, uh, during data preparation, I used self-join. And the keys was every manager can be employee, and employee is managed by manager. So now the manager name and employee full name uh, are joined together. And then um, I used data source filters to secure my data source. And this is an excellent way of putting a global filter on top of uh, your dashboard. Um, so here, I, it, it's not that useful for me because I'm already checking the domain username inside. But I just want to demonstrate that this is very useful in case you have an analysis and you have a big data. Uh, for example, you have sales data, and you, uh, you're asked to analyze product A, and you don't care about product B or C. So at this point, it doesn't make sense to load all the data and um, slow down the dashboard. So data source filter is the go. 
So it, it will speed up uh, and, and just load the data that is necessary for the analysis. So one of the trade-off options I used um, is multiple table storage versus single table storage. And by default, uh, when you do the extract and store it, it's stored as a single table. So the, the join that happens, the self-join that happened between two tables have been stored as one single file if you use the default way of storage. This would take some time during the extraction to do the creation, during, sorry, the creation of the extract, it will take more time, but during the execution of the query, it will be fast. On the other side, the multiple uh, table storage will give you opportunity to store the tables as is, no join happen at the uh, extract time, and the extract time would be very fast because basically it stores all the tables. But on the other side, during execution of the query, it may take time. So it's a trade-off design. So now the question is when to use the multiple storage. There is two incidents where you can use it. First, when the number of rows of the joint table is more than the sum of all the tables, sum of rows of all the tables. At this point, using the multiple storage is effective. Because usually, uh, it, we have redundancy. When you do the join, we have redundancy in the rows. To avoid this redundancy, we, it's better to save, it, uh, save all the tables together, not the, join table, the big table join. The second uh, thing that makes you use multiple storage is if you are using row level security, which I did. Row level security, Filters are executed prior to executing uh, the, the, join, the, uh, the join query. So this will give a boost in performance. So it's rule of thumb. If you're using RLS, go for multiple storage. So i like to share with you now the user interface design tricks. Um, so because uh, the, the, the file that I use uh, is a flat file, and you have a manager and a pre in the same file, and I like to project both of them in, this, in the same viz. So in order to do this, I did the self-join, and the self-join had two data sources, so I drag the manager name along with the employee name from the other data source in a hierarchy. And this allows me to project them both together in the same viz. The other uh, trick is about user-friendly message. So Usually, when you use content governance, uh, you control the views according to the authorization given to this person who logged in. So some of the views would not be uh, like uh, open for viewing. They are hidden to the user. So it ends up that your dashboard will have holes. These holes are not looking nice. In order to get it right, you need to uh, present a nice user-friendly message. So in order to do this, uh, one of the tricks, one, actually one of the things you can think about, which is the hard way, is to employ JavaScript. But this takes time and effort, and not everyone is into JavaScript. Alternatively, you can use uh, you, uh, a floating, Flo so you can do stacking the, uh, the uh, message behind the view that you like to show or hide. And then when it's hidden, then the user-friendly message will, will stay there and will appear to the user. So it's a kind of trick that works. In order to do it, you need to just uh, stack them behind each other, on top of each other, and then uh, the, uh, the message should be float so that you can control whether to send it back or in front. Another trick is related to the expressions, uh, the shapes. Uh, so here I have two uh, shapes, uh, one for female and one for male. I like to distinguish between them. Um, so I, I used a calculated field, and I check the gender. If it's female, then show the, uh, the female picture, otherwise the female. Uh, so it looks cool on the dashboard. So lessons learned. Having a personalized dashboard help us to place the right data in the right hand. And this deployed the, uh, the idea of the content governance. 
And we can see from this presentation that we designed only one dashboard that deploy level of governance. We have the VIP privilege, we have the HR, we have both of them together, and we have the executive. Each one has different views with different authorization. So in order to put them all in one dashboard, this is a scalable solution and will save time and effort and maintenance time. Uh, imagine back in old time when we design uh, multiple dashboards for every group. Nowadays, with employing the user functions, this can be easily done using uh, those filters. Also, securing the data source using the data source filters is a good uh, option uh, that uh, give you ultimate control on the, over the data source. And the trade-off option of using multiple table storage versus single uh, is something that you need to look at, if you're use, especially if you're using RLS or row-level security filters. So the governance plan um, is very important, and very um, important not only to lay a good governance plan, but the most important is to execute it and to uh, educate the people in the organization about it and uh, heighten the awareness, awareness uh, about uh, non-being compliant. Tableau Blueprint Planner can help in laying a good governance plan, uh, so it's, it's, um, it's a very helpful tool. And also the transparency is very important in this uh, direction. Um, so at the end, I want to say that business is hard to have the competitive edge. And you got to leverage your data asset in order, to, if you like, to, to have this uh, competitive edge. And um, it's not easy, but it pays off by time. And as you saw from the poll, it heightened the awareness of the data, it increased the engagement of the customers, and mostly it increased the trust. For your information, if you like to play with the user functions, here is the link. And uh, I already uh, put the link to the data source you can download and start doing governance or content governance using those amazing functions. Also, I put here the references for the multiple table storage, governance models, blueprint planner. At the end, I want to say thank you. And here is uh, the survey. Uh, let me know your feedback about this session, if it's useful, uh, how to enhance it. Thank you very much for listening.